I got it to Back to uh, So we are back on the record. You remain under oath, and thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Sir, I want to take you back to a second regarding the uh, searches for the gun that took place. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, besides um, the search that BCI undertook, are you aware of, besi and besides what you indicated what the Cleveland took at the Justice Center, are you aware of any other any areas that were were searched? My CPD. Uh, I believe it was uh, around the exit, around uh, 72nd when they got off 90, uh, where the car kind of missed the ramp, went into the grass a little bit. I believe CPD sent some officers down there to search that area in case anything had been thrown out of the car. And do you know the results of that search? I don't believe anything was found there either. Okay, and I, I want to go through for a second the court's indulgence. You received these, the guns, did you not? Uh, they came to our office, yes, sir. And I'm showing you a stack right here of all these guns. Is this how they, is how you received them? Uh, less a few of the stickers on there, but yes, sir. And this is how you determine the names? What, what information did you glean from this? Uh, it was through the firearms being turned over to us that we were able to get the actual names of the officers involved. Uh, the labeling on the boxes lists the officer that the gun was collected from. Okay, and quickly, sir, we'll go through these uh, 12 boxes, identify, what, first of all, the exhibit number. And for the record, what am I giving you? Uh, this is what is simply termed a gun box. And it's uh, boxes that are used standard to package firearms for uh, evidence collection and uh, lab submission. Sir, did... By the way, did these gun boxes, I mean, the, the guns given to you, did they indicate how many shots were fired out of them? Uh, in the description of property, it is listing. Uh, in this particular case, it's Exhibit 1, uh, Glock 9mm, Model 17, uh, serial number, loaded with one live round in chamber, one live round in magazine. Meaning prior to shipment, I assume. Uh, that's the way the gun was collected. Right, right. They're not sending it to you with something in the chamber. Uh, no, sir. It's been checked in and unloaded. Uh, there are some circumstances where firearms have been submitted to the lab. Oh, really? There's one in the chamber. Uh, those are usually flagged immediately, and someone from the firearms section of the lab, uh, such as Mr. Roberts that was here, will come up to the front and secure the weapon. Okay. So, sir, when you receive these, like the judge said, there's, there's nothing in the chamber here. They are usually unloaded. Okay. Could you open, open the box? And Is today usually? Uh, no, sir. Uh, in States Exhibit 1, again, this is a Glock 9mm Model 17. Uh, owner, uh, PO Michael Brillo, number 416. Uh, it was collected by Lieutenant Tim. Um, but you received those boxes? Yes. The boxes were sealed with evidence tape and signed off 11-30-12 by the officer that uh, secured the evidence. Uh, inside the box is the pistol. Uh, it is wire tied to the box so it doesn't bounce around. Uh, there's a wire tie in here indicating the gun is cleared. One extra magazine. Is there also a magazine in it right now? Uh, no, Your Honor, it's empty. Okay, so one magazine. One magazine is with it. Uh, I'm assuming these uh, live rounds were in here. If they were test fired by our lab, uh, for the weapon to be test fired, they usually use ammo submitted with the firearm. Okay. And that gun belonged to who? Uh, 
This is Officer Brillo's firearm. And it indicated on top of that box the number of rounds that were acquired? Uh, it indicates it was collected with one live round in the chamber and one live round in the magazine, so two rounds total with it. So it just gives what the condition of the gun was? When it was collected by the officers. Okay. Uh, also on it are the uh, BCA lab submission numbers to show evidence tracking. Okay. So this is it number two. Uh, exhibit number two again is a uh, gun box with a uh, nine millimeter, a model 19, uh, serial number loaded with one live round in chamber and 13 live rounds in magazine. Uh, this was uh, Officer Cynthia Moore's firearm, clicked by uh, Lieutenant Tim. In this case, the gun is uh, still wire tied. The magazine and ammunition are in this uh, bag and labeled similarly as the label on the box. And who did that gun belong to? This is uh, Officer Cynthia Moore. And through your investigation, who was Officer Cynthia Moore? Uh, Officer Moore was partnered with Officer Brie Lotus this night. Exhibit number three. Didn't we do this with Roberts? Yes, we did. I, I, judge, I can. I mean, you've talked about Brillo's as partners. I guess those are fine. But why do we need to go through all of it again? We don't, we Judge. It's not an issue for us. If you have particular questions about particular guns, of course you're welcome okay. to. But I don't think all right, we I was just trying to go through the chain of custody. Okay, right. So you received 12 boxes, correct? Yes, sir. Indicated the information you talked about. Yes, sir. And these 12 boxes indicated who the shooters were. Uh, minus one, we knew there was a 13th shooter. Uh, I believe he was. Uh, his name was provided to us by uh, union members. Okay. So the, at, at that point in time, this was very important information to you? Yes, sir. And why was that? Uh, we didn't know exactly who the officers were. Uh, we needed to know who they were so we could begin the investigation and begin our interviews. Did the evidence, I'm sorry, did the information you gleaned from, from these boxes, was that somehow correlated to your interviews? Yes. Uh, the names on the boxes created our list of people we needed to interview, and uh, thus working with uh, members of the union, uh, they made contact with them to create our interview time frame and uh, timetable. Going back to exhibit number one, just for one second, and that was Officer Brillo's gun, correct? Yes, sir. And the information in regarding the ammunition and things of that nature, well, first of all, do you know what type of gun that is? Yes, sir. Uh, Glock is a uh, gun originally made in Europe. They do manufacture it now in the United States. Um, their advertising is that they have about 65% of the police market. Uh, they're very prevalent in the law enforcement field. Uh, a 9 millimeter. this is a Model 17. Uh, what seven, does that mean? It, this particular model is uh, 17 rounds in the magazine. Uh, they make guns in three different sizes. This is a full-size pistol. They make a compact and then a subcompact. Uh, and when you say 17, 17 bullets? 17 bullets in the magazine in this particular firearm. This was, this was the original gun Glock created. So if I have that Glock and I put my magazine in with 17 bullets. Yes, sir. And I got 17 in there. Yes, sir. Not 18. Well, uh, law enforcement, we prefer to instruct officers in what's called an administrative load. Load your magazine to full capacity, seated in the firearm, chamber around, remove the magazine, top it back off, and reinsert it in the gun. That way you have the max capacity the gun can carry a full magazine plus one in the chamber. Is, it, is that standard in the police industry, so to speak? We hope so. Uh, there are times in, in some interviews, officers don't remember why, whether they had that plus one in there or they just put a magazine in, chambered around, and went on duty. So regarding that particular uh, gun, <coughs> it indicates there are how many bullets left? Two. 
There was one in the chamber and one in the magazine when it was recovered. So as far as that magazine goes, how many could, bullets could be fit in that magazine? This magazine would be 17 rounds. So there's one in there already, right? Plus one in the chamber would make it 18. So there would be, what, 16 bullets you could put fit in there right now? Uh, there would be 17 you could fit in here. Oh, there's, I thought you said there were two bullets. Well, there's two, well, there's two left. Right. Okay. Uh, the magazine itself holds 15, or 17, I'm sorry. The magazine holds 17. There was one in here, one in the chamber. So if there was uh, 17 total, two recovered, there would have been 15 rounds fired out of here. Okay. I get you. You're assuming there's not a, a bullet in the chamber. When it was reloaded, I don't know the condition uh, exactly. Uh, based on the interviews, uh, I do know the condition when the magazine exchange took place. It was, is there any uh, markings there regarding anybody from CPD who had, had taken that uh, particular gun? Uh, yes, sir. The uh, tag is listed as collected by uh, Lieutenant Tim. And that would be throughout these uh, these boxes. Yes, sir. You know Lieutenant Tim? I, him? I I I met him years ago. Yes, sir. And what police force is he from? Uh, Cleveland Police Department. When I met him, he was the supervisor of the Fifth District Detective Bureau. And sir, you indicated that the Cyber Crimes Unit collected a number of, of videos. Yes, sir. Do you know the locations of where they collected those videos? Not exactly. No. I know a few came, uh, one came from CPD outside of uh, uh, the office uh, in St. Clair across the street from the police department. Uh, I know a couple came from the RTA stations. I don't know the exact locations though. Were I wasn't able, involved with that part. Were you able to view the, the videos that were, that were uh, obtained? Yes, sir. Okay, and sir, was there a video of 20 minutes of this, of this chase? I know, compilated? I, I know there was a compilation made for ease of view, and yes, sir. And did you see that compilation? Yes, sir, I have. What exhibit is this? Have you seen it? I'm sure I have. You would object, though. Or you do or do not? I'm sorry. You do or do not object? I do object. Oh, on what grounds? Relevance. Uh, okay. Over there. Again, Judge, this is going to be a 20 minute tape. Is there, sound, is there sound on there? There's no sound on there. Can you pause it for a second, Ms. Barnett? Yes, sir. Do you propose to be asking questions while it plays or just play it right through? Just play it right through, Your Honor. All right, so, uh, uh, Mr. Lloyd and Ms. Nunez, thank you. We're off the record for the time being. So let's. Uh, not have any of our typical debates until we get back on the record. Okay, yeah.
right, so we're back on the record. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Sir, you just watched this 20-minute video? Yes, sir. Were you able to determine how many police cars were involved in this chase uh, at the peak time? Watching it and counting it now, I counted 62 at one point. Okay, do you know how many jurisdictions were involved in this? Originally, uh, we had uh, learned that besides Cleveland, that uh, we had information that uh, possibly RTA had become involved, that the Highway Patrol had become involved, and possibly the Sheriff's Department had become involved at various points. Okay, and how many, could you give, give us the majority of cars from what jurisdiction do you know? Uh, the majority were Cleveland vehicles. And on, on the video, it showed that some officers' cars didn't have their lights on at the point sometimes. Yes, sir. Did you notice that too? All right. You omitted Brad and all. Brad and all, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> all right, sir. Um, sir, I believe we were setting up the point in time where you did the interviews, correct? Yes, sir. And you talked to the judge about the protocols that you utilized. Yes, sir. Correct? And. Sir, did you use any type of any type of uh, demonstrative paper or anything when you utilized uh, your interviews with these individuals? Yes, sir. Our crime scene unit uh, did the diagramming with the total stations and were able to overlay those on a Google Earth image. Uh, we had them superimpose the uh, positions of the vehicles that were there when they did the scene on top of a uh, view of the parking lot. Uh, we printed those out in color and presented them to each of the officers we interviewed and uh, as part of the interview process had them draw, mark their locations, where their cars were, where they moved to, where their position was when they fired. It was also included with the report and uh, submitted to our case file. And sir, I'm not sure, did we um, complete the dates of the interviews with the individuals that you, uh, that you, uh, no, sir. no, sir, we did not. Okay. I believe we left off on, on, uh, December 5th, correct? Yes, sir. And just for the record and to refresh my memory, who on December 5th did you interview? On December 5th was officers Diaz, Demchek, Sobolik, and Patrick. And again, that was the first time you learned that anybody was on the hood of any vehicle, correct? Yes, sir. And then, one of the next uh, interviews that you did with the shooters? Uh, December 6th were officers Eric, Farley, Box, Rinkus, and Sistek. Okay. And then on December 10th uh, was Officer Brillo. On office, uh, excuse me, on uh, December 14th, I participated in the second interview with Officer Jordan. And on the 19th, I participated in the second interview with Officer Holm. Okay. So you actually brought a couple individuals back for a second interview, correct? Yes, sir. Could you tell us, Court, if you know the reasons why you brought Officer Jordan back for a second interview? Uh, his initial interview uh, was conducted by other officers. It was then uh, that the video was found of his traffic stop with the Malibu initially. Uh, that was brought back and he was re-interviewed to get more details as far as the traffic stop and his actions. And regarding Officer Hummel, why was he brought back? Uh, Officer Hummel was brought back after it was learned uh, there were some text messages that uh, he had sent that uh, posed some questions to us about some of his observations referring to those details. Sir, during your interview process, did you inquire, ask these officers if they had used any electronic devices while they were on the scene? Yes, sir, we did. Well, what did you ask them? Uh, we asked initially if they had seen anybody taking any cell phone pictures and uh, later amended that to ask if they took, as well as did they see anybody take any cell phone images. Anything else with their phones? Uh, initially at the scene, no. Uh, 
We did ask uh, if they had any communication with other people uh, about the case, uh, besides obvious uh, union and council and uh, family members. But uh, at the scene that night, our primary thing was what was the uh, documentation that they may have done with the cell phone. During the course of the interviews, was there a point in time with any officer indicated there were no pictures taken? And then you found out right then there were pictures taken? That was when we had to clarify our, uh, our questioning. We asked uh, the officer if she had seen anybody take pictures. Uh, she said no. Um, asked for a few moments to speak with counsel and then came back in and admitted that she had taken a couple pictures. And who was that? Uh, that was uh, Officer O'Donnell. Okay. All right. So you're talking to the um, you're talking to the uh, uh, officers, and you had that map in front of you, correct? Yes, sir. If I could get up State's Exhibit Number Thirty, please. Okay. Is this an example of of the map that we're talking about? Yes, sir. It is. And what was the purpose of using a map like this? Uh, this is the overlay where their crime scene had done with uh, location of vehicles overlaid on the Google Earth image. We use this as an orientation for the officers with uh, the position of the uh, two primary Cleveland uh, vehicles with the Malibu and the vehicles in the back parking lot and then had them show us where they were at when they pulled in what their positioning was, where they fired from. And did you have them acknowledge or sign this document when you when you interviewed them? Yes, sir, we did. Uh, up at the top, uh, right, in, to the, the right. in the blue, I see initials and a badge number. I see my name also down the uh, left side. And this is PB2526. PB is what? That would be Officer Paul Box. And that would be what? His badge number. Was that consistent with all of the individual officers that you talked to? Yes, sir. Okay. And, sir, why did you use this map? In trying to understand the dynamics of the situation, we wanted to know how they performed where it was. Uh, our crime scene unit got there and, in searching for shell casings, had seen tire tracks in the grass on that island to the left of the driveway between the, the driveway and they turned the bus loop, uh, but there was no vehicle there. In doing our interviews, we found out that there were other vehicles that had been parked there that had been removed from the location prior to our crime scene arrival. Okay, sir, if the court would, uh, okay, this officer coming, I mean, agent coming down. Now, you indicated to use this to find out where the officers were. Yes, sir. Okay, and this is Paul Box. Okay, could you indicate where Paul Box is on this particular? What's penciled in here with a marker is another vehicle here behind. Uh, oh, that's okay. Behind uh, the police car, uh, Charger. He had parked here behind there and uh, drawn on the side. Uh, he had moved up next to the Charger and then. Uh, moved around the car, even with the Malibu, and he fired from up in this location. Uh, State's exhibit number 31. So we'll go, we'll go past 31. Let's go to 32. Okay. So any some marks for identification purpose, State's exhibit number 32. Are you familiar with that document? Yes, sir. Well, what is that? Uh, this is Officer Demchek. The map that uh, he used in his interview. Okay, is his uh, indication that it's him on there? Uh, his initials are over here on the side. It's the date of the interview, 12-5-12, and his name written. And somewhere on there should be either myself or uh, Detective Gardner's signature as well. Okay, move up or down on it, see if it. No, up or down. That is my writing, though. Okay. Could you go back to the original uh, uh, picture? Sure. Thank you. And what did, uh, where is there markings here? 
marking here is uh, penciled in the grassy area, uh, just off the bus loop here. And there is a dot down here indicating uh, kind of behind uh, 238 in that area where uh, the officer said he was. Okay. Exhibit 33. So you recognize that document? Yes, this is uh, Patrolman Diaz. Uh, his initials down here at the bottom. Uh, this one is signed by me, his name and the date. Uh, this is kind of a reverse angle of the parking lot showing uh, where he was at in this upper part of the parking lot between the two islands where his cruiser made contact with the Malibu and then uh, he fired from this area. Okay, and who's, who's Martins are those that you're pointing to? These are the markings made by Officer Diaz. Okay, thank you, sir. Let's take exhibit number 34. You recognize that document, sir? Yes, sir, this is uh, Detective Barry. Okay. Uh, again, dates, his name printed, my signature, his signature and badge number here. What he pencils in is the, up by the bus loop itself, how we crossed down across the grass and came down, looks to be uh, almost in front of the uh, Crown Victoria, even with the uh, Malibu. Okay, thank you. It's exhibit number 35. You recognize doc that document, sir? Okay, and who is that? That'd be, do you know who that is? Uh, no, sir. Okay, stick Zimmer 36. You recognize that document, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, this is Michael Farley. Uh, date, his name printed, my signature. Uh, there would be his uh, initials. Uh, Drawn in here behind the uh, Crown Victoria Cruiser uh, 238 would be a drawn in car where he was at here. It looks like there's also a mark farther up behind 238 that indicate where his position would have been. 37. Um, we'll go to 38. Here we went to 37. No, I'm sorry. Um, 42. Recognize this one? Yes, this is uh, Officer Cynthia Moore. Her initials at the top. Uh, she circled CPD card 217 as being where she was at. Okay. I don't see any other margins on that. All right. States Exhibit uh, 43. You recognize this document, sir? This is uh, Detective O'Donnell. The initials down in the corner, uh, showing that she penciled in where her car was at up here on the grass, and the path where she took to uh, looks like the driver's side at 238 and fired from there. Okay, sir, looking at this particular thing, this uh, document, I'm pointing here to this sidewalk here. That was she indicated she fired. Uh, yeah, she has a dot drawn right on the sidewalk and a line indicating her sight line. Six is number forty-four. You recognize that document, sir? Uh, Officer uh, Patrick, his name and date, my signature, his initials and badge number. 
He's showing that he's parked behind uh, 217, made his way over, and came up on the right side of 217 and stopped and fired from there. Do you know what he fired with? Uh, that would be a handgun. All right. Uh, state's exhibit number 45. Recognize that document, sir. So the Civic and the initials here. Okay, but you don't see any of your markings there, do you? No, sir. Okay. Is there markings where he was at? Uh, so there's a circle here, the parking lot area, uh, excuse me, the sidewalk area towards the edge of the uh, playground. But that map isn't like the other maps, is it not? Yeah, no, sir. The, the orientation is off, and there's no crime scene overlay on this one. Okay. States of number 46. This is uh, Detective Rinkus. Name right there, my signature, his initials, and badge number. Uh, what he drew in is as he and his partner came into the parking lot and the uh, Malibu turned around and heading back out. They turned around, came up through the yard, kind of across the edge of the playground and stopped here. We got out on foot, came across the driveway to the sidewalk, fired from there and retreated back to his car. So he never actually passed the uh, victim's car, did he? He made this big move. Uh, if he did, he would have passed it in the upper part of the parking lot here as the Malibu came around. Okay. He turned around, came back down the driveway and stopped. State's Exhibit 47. Do you recognize this document, sir? Brian Sibolic, uh, his name's printed, my signature, his initials and badge number. Uh, indicating his car was parked. He's showing farther down uh, towards the end of the driveway behind 238. And we got out, moved around the back of the car and came up on the uh, driver's side. And who was his partner that night? That would have been Officer Farley. That is Officer Farley. Oh, that's the Bullock. I'm sorry, my bad. Okay, you're right. Six number 48. You recognize that document, sir? This is uh, Detective Salubo. Uh, I believe he was with Officer Rinkus. Uh, his initial and badge number. Uh, circling the area here, and again, a line up to the sidewalk, and then back again to the car. Officer Seifert, State's Exhibit Number 49. Recognize that document, sir? No. Okay. There's no writing. Okay. And finally, states number fifty. Recognize that document. This is Officer Sistek. Again, my signature, his initials and badge number. And hard to see, but uh, it's uh, part 238, and we've got a view shown from the passenger side around the back to the driver's side of the vehicle. Could you uh, zoom it out for us? There you go. Okay. So I can see they indicating coming out the passenger door around the back of the car.
Sir, while you were going through these interviews, were you doing anything at that point regarding the maps? Yes. Uh, we had a large printout poster size of the overall diagram. And as we would complete our interviews, we'd come out with a post-it note, put the officer's name on it, draw where they started from what vehicle, where they ran to and fired from, so we could identify their uh, actions and movements. So everybody can see this. I want to put this where everybody can see it. This, this would be a good spot. Shooting the show to marks for identification purpose states exhibit number 1242. Should you recognize this blow up? Yes, sir. That is a uh, blow up of uh, the maps we've been looking at here. Okay, could you, if you could come on down here and tell the court you've been looking at this map, do your investigation, who, which, what the number of the cars are and who's in each car. Let's hit CN, let's start at the top. Starting at the top, uh, license plate number is CNS2443, unmarked Crown Victoria to Officer Fairchild, this location. Okay. Across from him is CPD215, the charger marked and is listed as Diaz. Uh, Diaz have a partner that yeah, night? Yeah, a partner that night, a female, and I can't think of her name right now. Uh, further down is CPD. 243A, a marked Crown Victoria with Officer Hummel. Okay, did Officer Hummel have a, have a partner that night? That would have been Officer Seifer. Okay. Uh, we have an unmarked car here, uh, DZH5079 with no names attached on this diagram. Okay. Go down further. Further down is CPD244. A uh, marked Crown Victoria with officers Cruz and Gonzalez. Further down here, we have a uh, FJD 7297, an unmarked black charger, officers Rinkus and Salupo. All right. Below that is license plate FJD 7285, an unmarked silver charger with Sergeant Coleman. Did you have a partner that night? Yes, she did. I can't recall the name now. Okay. Uh, the uh, blue Chevy FSA 3495. Next to that is CPD 238, Mark Crown Victoria, with officers uh, Sistek and Recidivic. Okay. All right, the last one. The last one is CPD 217. Uh, Mark Charger with officers Grillo and Moore. So these, this is the map that you were kind of using when you were gathering the information? Yes. And sir, did you have... You take this down. <coughs> did you have an opportunity to review the information gathered by the crime scene? Uh, portion of BCI? Yes, sir, I did. And to your knowledge, was a crime scene processed? The scene itself? Yes. Yes. By BCI? Yes, sir. Do you know the agents that did that? Uh, those would have been agents uh, Winterick, McNeely, and Staley. Okay. Sir, I'm going to show you some mark for identification purposes. The state's good at 815A. Recognize this, sir? Yes, sir. And what is it? That is a uh, close up of the area around uh, CPD cars 217 and 238 and the Chevy, uh, indicating the shell casings that were found and marked in the total station. And how is this significant to what you were trying to do regarding the crime scene, sir? Uh, initially, when we had our first copy, it was not multicolored, it was just an indication of where the shell casings were found. Uh, some of the shell casings that were located uh, helped support the statements of where officers were at when they fired. 
And sir, let's talk a little bit about firearms for a second. You are a certified firearms instructor? Yes, sir. And you're familiar with Glocks and how they operate? Yes, sir, I am. And sir, do you have a trainer's gun with you right now? Yes, sir, I do. Could you please get it? Stay right there. Okay. All right. What are you What are you taking out of that bag? This is a trainer's uh, for, for training on a Glock pistol. Uh, whereas a standard Glock is a. Well, first of all, is, is that a real gun? This is not a real gun. When I'm explaining, uh, this particular gun has no firing in it. Uh, it does function the same as a regular Glock pistol. Magazines can be removed. The action works. The significant thing in the training issue is with a regular Glock, once the trigger is depressed, the gun has to cycle for the trigger to reset. In some of the training scenarios, this particular uh, instructor's piece is used by our police academy. There's usually a laser insert here for interactive uh, video shoot, don't shoot scenarios that has been removed. For that, the status of what Glock calls a resettable trigger, we will fire every time. I don't have to actually physically manipulate the gun. The only other way the gun would work in a, a real situation, when a round is discharged, it cycles the gun and resets the trigger in the action in here. But for all intents and purposes, this works the same as using a standard magazine, just like a regular Glock pistol. This is a Glock 17, a full-size trainers. Is that similar to what the officers had that night, the CPD officers? Uh, most of them. Uh, in the case of the one gun, Officer Moore has a model 19, slightly smaller. Uh, the hand grip would be a little bit smaller. If you have a smaller grip, you might want something like that a little more control. And sir, are you familiar with how the cartridges are ejected from a Glock? Uh, for the most part, when the gun cycles, the uh, extractor pulls the spent casing out of the chamber, hits the ejector, the case is thrown roughly to the right, and usually behind. If the gun was pointed this way, kind of at an arc coming this way. Okay, but there are differences as far as that, correct? Uh, Tell the court what, what could... The variances involved on where shell casings land depend on a number of things. Uh, wear and tear on the gun, lubrication, cleanliness to start. Uh, the ammunition itself can indicate sometimes if it's a hard case or a softer metal case on the uh, casing itself whether the gun is inclined or declined, because uh, that changes the pattern of the arc and where the shell casing can land. So a lot of things come into, as well as if an officer is pointing out straight, the gun is pretty much straight up and down. If it's a one-hand grip, your body naturally inclines the wrist slightly. Again, that changes the angle. Uh, a study done by the Force Science Institute indicates it can vary by all those manners changing exactly how much, basically starting at about six feet away from the gun. The other thing that impacts the location of shell casings is the surface the casing lands on. It can land on grass and stop, it can hit concrete, it can bounce, as well as other environmental factors, wind blowing around, people kicking them. Uh, in some situations, the response of emergency vehicles, we would check them to see if maybe a casing got caught in the tire tread of the fire truck or something as well. Okay. And sir, you were able to look at where the casings were found, correct? Yes, sir. And did you then correlate that with the interviews you had with the officers? Yes, sir. And were you able to give a general location of where all the officers were when they shot? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I want to utilize this model for a second and be able to put all of the officers' uh, locations when they shot. And again, you never did any specific, how should I say, uh, 
measurements, did you? No. This is just a general location where they're at. That is correct. Based upon what they said in their map, correct? Yes, sir. And where the ballistics found all the all the uh, uh, cases, correct? Yes, sir. So let's start with Paul Box. We have his map on there. You can pull that up for me, please. Objection, Your Honor. I was wondering when that was going to come. I just figured it had strategic reasons for not objecting to the other hearsay, but it's, it's sustained. As to, what, to, as to what, Your Honor? It's hearsay. What Box told him where he is is hearsay. You're offering for the truth of the matter to show that Box was indeed where he said he was. Okay, then I'll utilize this particular um, uh, exhibit as to where the individuals were, well, based upon, their, upon where their cases were found. That's okay, but you'll then want to say, can you put the figure that represents Box where his casing was found? Something like exactly. that. Exactly. I'll stay away from the map, Your Honor. Your Honor, just I object to the last question that was raised by Mr. Gutierrez, not the court's question. Suggested question. Oh, so you you don't mind the hearsay? Well, I do, but there is also another issue in terms of location versus approximate. Well, uh, okay. I'm sustaining it based on hearsay, but the next question then is, so the point is it was sustained whether it's for the reason you want it or not, and we'll have the next question. Okay. Sir, could you give an approximate location of where Officer Box was based upon the findings of the crime scene investigators where the location of the uh, cartridges were, sir? Uh, well, you say based upon the findings of the crime scene investigators, including him, including the statement that he took. I didn't, uh, I didn't say that, Your Honor. I said how, I was how about this? Uh, Mr. Soraya, you, you're aware of where your colleagues concluded that Box's uh, spent shotgun shell was found? Yes, sir. And based on your knowledge of guns, does this give you an ability to approximate where he must have been when he shot it? Uh, yes, sir. Again, the shotgun ejects out the right side, slightly behind. Uh, he fired one round. Uh, just looking to see if we can color code on that to get the location where yeah. the case Well, is. then you're certainly welcome to go up to it in a second. But the point is, it, when you approximate the locations of these people, you have to do it based upon things already in evidence, namely the location where their casings were found, not to represent in, in, a, in visual fashion where they told you they were, because that is your Your Honor, we would object other than just to show where casings were found and identify whose casings they were. To take the next step and give an approximation as to where the officer was, we object to that uh, process. I, I think... I think that is uh, that objection is not sustained for this reason. First of all, as a finder of fact, I recognize that it's approximate. And you have certainly given an opportunity to cross-examine this witness and make it perfectly clear that he has no way of knowing exactly where these people are standing. In other words, your objection is approximate versus exact. Am I right? That plus the hearsay aspects. Right. Well, the hearsay we're trying to eliminate by going on the casings, which were gotten into evidence without hearsay. So, uh, knowing your uh, limitations here, could, could you give us the approximate location of where Officer Box was based upon where his the uh, spent casing of his shotgun was? The diagram indicates brown color. There's one brown color here, uh, approximately even with the, about the front tire of uh, 217, put him somewhere roughly in this area. Okay. <coughs> Next, uh, Officer Brillo. Uh, his casings are indicated by red. Uh, we're finding a whole bunch in this area. Uh, now, you took a statement from Officer Brillo, did you not? Yes, sir. Do you indicate to you where he was? Uh, yes. The, the, when he fired his, let's, let me ask this. Did he ever indicate to you he was on the trunk of a vehicle? 
Yes. And which vehicle would that have been? 238. Okay. All right. And is that the last position that he had told you? Uh, Firing, I should say. On the trunk lid, shooting over the light bar. Okay. Could you put where Officer Brilos indicated where he was the last time he remembers shooting? Officer Demchek. Michael Demchek is green, light green, indicating here somewhere in the back. If his casings are coming to the right, he was somewhere over here. Okay, so his approximate position would be somewhere in here. <clears throat> Officer Farley. And by the way, sir, in this diagram, in this model that we have here, is it complete as far as cars in this area? Yes. As, as it was found in diagram by our friends. Okay, here. from here back, is it, it? It's accurate until the, the driveway wraps down, comes this way, and Lee Road would be over there. Were there any cars situated over here? Based on the interviews? Based upon anything that you learned during your information, uh, I mean during your investigation. Based on the interviews, we learned that there had been cruisers parked back here behind our two cars, uh, as well as up in the grass area here. Could you place where you think the other car? Based upon the information you learned. And you said someone was where now? Uh, we had one car up in the grass area approximately here, and one more car indicated somewhere up in here, possibly on the bus loop itself, but somewhere in that area. Okay, I believe we left off of Officer Farley. area would you put him tentatively somewhere in back in that area okay. officer Moore officer Moore is indicated by a blue color found in this area here uh, so we're even possibly with the light bar of uh, 217. Officer O'Donnell. Oh. Do you have men and women? No, we just broken no oh. base. up in this area, put her possibly somewhere about here. Okay. And next we have Officer Patrick. As indicated by purple, being up in this area, you'd be up here again somewhere in this area. Okay. Officer Rinkus. Darker blue, back in this area. Indicating he'd be somewhere around here. Officer Symbolic. area as well. Officer Salupo. So 
Chalupo is uh, the bright pink. It says no, no cartridge is found. Okay. All right, then we go to Officer Sistic. Uh, Sistic is a maroon color. See his in this area here. Put him roughly somewhere right behind the car. All right. Thank you. you can go up on the stand. And, sir, for the court's advocation, this is an approximation, correct? Yes, sir. There's nothing exact about this? No, sir. You're trying to give the court an idea of where everybody was generally? Generally. Let me interrupt you, Mr. Gutierrez. Sure. We'll take a break at this point. You have the people positioned. Uh, why don't we say 10 till so you remain on your own? See you in 15 minutes. Thank you, sir. We're off the record. Thank you. Shooting. 